Hey guys, I wanted to talk about registering for Top 100. Whether it's Seattle show or Vegas or California or Florida or New Jersey or wherever you're registering for Top 100, I want to make sure that you have the idea behind how to do this and the best way to be prepared. The first thing you need to do is make sure you got some money. Now, usually it's somewhere between 50 and 60 bucks, and it's not a bad deal compared to a lot of other events. You get two wristbands and a lanyard and a badge, a t shirt, a goodie bag. But you got to make sure you have that money. I do hear a lot of the times, oh man, I'll register after I get paid on Friday. Sometimes that can hurt you in the long run because either we'll run out or we will close or, or something to go along those lines. So make sure you get some money in your account. If not, borrow some cash from somebody. The second thing you need to know about is photos. These photos need to be 100% your best. I highly recommend that you do four-way photos. I'll show you an example here in a second. Now using four-way photos, you can create them with Instagram. That's a great way to do it. But that way we see 16 photos of your car instead of four. Now in those photos, you might want to show us a lot of different views of your fitment. Again, we're a fitment show. We're not a car show. We're a fitment show. It's all about the fitment. So think about that when you're sending that in. Now a great interior shot or a trunk shot or air ride setup good setup uh, pictures of your wheels, three piece, whatever, that's a good way to do it as well. Let's talk about the video. Now we ask you to upload a video to YouTube and give it to us. Don't put it anywhere else, put it on YouTube. It doesn't need to be a high production video. Think smart. You know, you can actually take a cell phone video of walking around your car and actually talking directly to a judge. That can really make a big difference about getting in the mind of the judges. The videos can make or break your entry, especially if, if you have a very popular car like an FRS or a BRZ or certain Lexuses or, or something like that or a Volkswagen. You know, when we have a lot of a certain type, things like a video can make or break your entry. Now, when you're ready to sit down and actually do the registering, I want to make sure you have your expectations set. You're going to need a few things. You're going to need your make and model. And while that sounds pretty easy, people screw it up every single year. Or they can't spell their, uh, they can't spell Lexus or Volkswagen. I don't know why. Maybe Mazda they can't spell. We're going to need to know your Instagram. Sometimes we share it with the judges. We usually only share it in a tie break situation or when we're trying to squeeze a car into a class or something like that. Because we don't usually put your name with your entry. Next thing we want to know is we want to know about your wheels and your specs. We are a fitment show. We're not a car show. We're a fitment show. So the fitment is the most important thing about your car. So adding those specs is a really good thing for us. Now, we're not going to share them. We'll keep them private. We might use them in our own personal builds, but we won't reveal them to people, all right? That's not a problem for us. Now, we kind of already talked about the photos. Make sure you get those four-way photos. If not, don't cut and paste something from Instagram. I don't care what the battery life on your phone is. I want to see a great quality photo of your car. That's the most important thing. Now you'll be asked to enter a few other things. Maybe you're on air ride, maybe you're static. We'll want to know things about compressors or air ride management or something like that. That's just so we can get other corporate sponsors involved or we can know a little bit of extra things about your car. So now once Top 100 closes, that's when we actually do the judging process. We don't do it while you're entering. We don't do it as long as people are still continuing to come in, like other events. We wait to see all the cars together. That's how we judge. So <clears throat> I'm going to personally go through all the single cars, and I'm going to make sure that you don't have three fingers of wheel gap, because if you do, I'm going to boot you right away. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to put you into a class. I'll put you into the most appropriate class. I'll even give you a backup class, especially if I really like your car. And then we're going to do the blind judging. So... Let's talk about how blind judging works. Blind judging is where one of our judge looks at a certain class altogether. A good example is, let's say VIP. They're going to look at, say, 15 to 20 VIP cars, all side by side, all the photos, all at the same time. Now, when you do that, it's very obvious which cars don't fit in. Now, all they have to do is go down our entire list and say yes or no. Yes, this car fits in. No, this car doesn't fit in. That's simple. Then the next judge comes along who can't see the first judge's comments or, or voting process and does the same thing. Then the third judge. 
Now when that's over, I'll come back and look at all those yeses and nos. It's pretty simple. Three yeses makes it into the event. Two yeses probably get an end, but it'll be probably in a later wave. One yes and two no's, probably not going to happen. If your car is pretty amazing, we might throw it in that backup class, but it's hard to say. So that's the next thing we need to talk about is the classes. We have several classes. We don't do them by make. We put them in by a very special order that we want to do. And there's usually only five to six in each class, except for some of our larger classes like Best Dance, obviously. Some of the other classes grow depending on the location that we're having the show. So after all this is done, that's when we start to inform you. Now these waves we always talk about, that's how many votes you're getting. It's whether you're getting three votes or two votes. Sometimes we have four judges or five judges. It just kind of depends on where we're at and how we're doing that process that year. This year we've pretty much been doing three judges everywhere we're doing it. And that way when we go to the event, we only have to take three judges. Because that's another key. <clears throat> All three judges have to, have to agree that your car is the winner for that class. All three judges, not one guy, not some dude's favorite, three guys have to agree that your car is the winner for a class. That's the most fair way we've ever seen it made. So that's the process that we use. It's that simple. There's a lot of other guys that do other things out there. Hey, that's great for them. But usually their favorite car is the one that wins. Ever notice that? That's how it seems to be. Now our process is blind. It's pretty simple. Our guys aren't necessarily in the scene or judging classes that they normally would judge or something like that. This makes it the most fair. If you know of another fair process that works, give me a call. I'd like to hear about it. But I've seen just about everybody's process. All right, guys. I seriously got to get back to work. I'm working on our Seattle event. It's a little bit crazy. We're trying to figure out how to do a few new things and slim down a few other things. Also working on some partner events, and we're trying to fit in a few other things this year. We'll see how that goes as well. Started working on our 2019 tour. It's going to be absolutely crazy. Hopefully we're adding a few new dates into that process. But I seriously got to get going. I might see you at an event. If, you, if so, come up and say hi. If not, I'll see you at one of our events really soon.